What's going on guys? This is Al B back with another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you the brand new plugin from Audio Modern called GateLab. Now, GateLab is a gate sequencing effect. It has some cool automation features, a lot of control, and really gives you a lot of creativity and control over the dynamics of your tracks. The best part about GateLab is it's free. That's right, guys. Audio Modern is bringing this one to you totally free. So it's definitely something you're going to want to check out. Before we get into it, guys, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so I can keep bringing y'all this good content. All right. Without further ado, this is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. Now, as with most sequencers or gate sequencers, um, they work better when you have sustained notes or in this case, sustained chords. So that's what we're gonna be using as our example today. I'm just gonna play around with it for just a minute so you guys can see kind of how to work it. And then I'm gonna go back through and kind of tell you what the different options, what the different buttons are and kind of how to get the most out of the plugin, all right? So let's just check it out. In the back, I have a simple chord progression and I'm gonna use GateLab and start playing around with it. So let's uh, check it out. So let me kind of just start talking through the different options and get you a better understanding of how to best use this in your workflow. Just, just going to you know reset it here and you see nothing is here. So when I hit play, nothing should play. Nothing plays. Cool. Um, so next, I'm actually going to just fill it all the way out. Um, then as you can see, everything plays. So Starting from the top left, you have your flow mode. You can have flow mode on or you can have flow mode off. And what that does is when it's randomly generating the sequences, it will either be all the way on or all the way off if you have flow mode off. So if you have flow mode off, that means that each one is either going to be on or it's going to be off, on or off, right? On or off. All right. On or off. But if you have flow mode on, then you can have a little bit more of a variation, right? It can be halfway on. It can be all the way on. It can be all the way off, you know, anywhere in between. You can kind of do it. You can click and drag. And that way, if you want it to fade out, like you may have saw me doing, you can kind of do that and you can simulate what that looks like. All right. So that's how flow mode works. Moving over to the left, you have your complexity. Now you have subtle, normal, and intense. And this is going to kind of de define how complex the randomly generated sequences are. So if I go to subtle mode, it's barely in there, right? So. But you can see with subtle mode, uh, it's pretty sparse, right? It's, it's subtle. If I go over to the more, um, you know, neutral or normal mode and I randomly generate it, when I click this icon, it's randomly generating a new sequence and based on the settings that I have. So when I move it to normal mode and generate it, it's kind of normal, right? Here and there, not too sparse, not too dense. Okay. Now, if I go to intense mode, then it's going to be a lot more dense. See, almost every step is on. And then if I go to flow mode off and I do that, then all of them are going to be fully on or fully off, right? So that still works. So each of these buttons and um, controls, as you start to step through here, you, you will see that you can kind of stack them and really get you can get pretty specific with how you want the randomly generated sequences to occur. 
Uh, moving over a little bit more, you have motion. So by default, it's going to be forward motion, which means that it's going to go forward through the sequence that you have here. Then you have reverse motion, which means it's going to go backwards to the sequence you have here. So here, let's show that how it works now going forward. Okay, then going backwards, so it's going to start from the right and go left. Okay, then if I go back and forth, it's kind of going to ping pong going left and right. Okay, this is the randomly generate button. So whenever you click this, it's going to generate a new sequence based on all of the different settings that you have enabled, whether you're going forward or backwards, whether your um, complexity is intense or normal, and whether flow mode is on or off. Right on the right side of that is the reset button. So you click that and it pretty much gives you a clean slate to start from. If I reset it, it's gonna clear it, it's gonna give you a clean slate. And so when I hit play, it doesn't play anything. I'm gonna turn this all the way back on and then our chord will play through complete. Right to the right of that, you have your bypass toggle. So when bypass is off, it's actually, it looks like it's off. This means that the plugin is actually bypassed right now. Right, so you can see that the chords played regardless of what step I was in because the plugin is bypassed. If I turn it off, right, that's gonna pretty much activate the plugin. All right, and that's really nice because you don't have to fumble with trying to go to the mixer. If you're trying to just compare or you just want to play around with it, you can bypass the plugin right from inside the plugin. Really nice and convenient. On the right hand side of the actual toggle, you have like a temporary toggle. So if I. But if I actually hold this down, it's going to act as though bypass is on. But if I let go. Then it's going to enable the plugin again. So this kind of does the opposite of whatever the bypass toggle is on. So in this in this state, when you see it colored green, that means the plugin is active. When I turn it off, the plugin is off. So if I was to press this button now, it's going to turn it on. So if I play it with the button grayed out, it's going to bypass the plugin. Right? But if I hold this, it's going to enable the plugin. Right. So it pretty much does the opposite. And that's really for MIDI control. If you want to kind of do something live, you can make use of that button. Moving over a little bit more to the right, you have your infinity setting. If you enable this infinity, then what happens is every bar, it'll do a new generation automatically. So when I click this button, it's doing new random sequences. But if you have the infinity icon on and you're letting it play through, it's going to generate a new random sequence every one bar. If I change it to two, it's gonna do it every two bars. So let me turn this to one. And then I wanna show you, you should see it randomly generate every bar. So after every bar is going to randomize the sequence. There you go. Moving on down to the left, you have your mono and stereo control. So if it's in mono, um, then it's going to either completely mute or completely allow. It's not going to do anything with left and right channels. If you go stereo mode, you have control over your left and right channels. So I can enable, you know, even with the flow mode, right? I can do that individually for different channel left and right. Now you can enable linking and that way, whenever you click on the left channel, it does the same on the right channel, right? So you also have that option as well. Moving over a little bit more to the right, you have your quantization. You know, you can go all the way from one and one all the way to one sixteenth um, or even one sixty fourth. I usually stay between one sixteenth and one thirty second. 
you have the length of your actual bar so you can take this up to you know 64 or whatever i usually leave it around 32 or i end up doing 64 either way and you can just type it in right here all right i like to keep it at 32 and do some kind of automation if i need it to be longer than that moving over to the right you have your key toggle and when you turn on the key lock what happens is you can now click on any step and it will lock that step, okay? And you can tell that a step is locked because you're gonna see a little yellow bar at the bottom, just like that. And it works too if I was to not link stereo, right? Then I can do individual left and right channels and lock that out too. And then when I randomize it, it won't move those. Those will stay where they are, okay? Whether I'm doing it with the button or whether the infinity is on and it's going to do it every bar. These that I have clicked on and locked will remain locked. And whenever you want to stop, you're like, ah, I'm good on that. You just hit the reset button beside the key lock and you're good to go. Moving over a little bit more to the right, you have your density control. And what this does is you can control how much density you have in each step or rather how many steps have density in them. And when I say density, I mean what you see me doing here. You can click right here by yourself and manually, you can turn one step into two steps or half a step or three steps or one step by itself. When you turn this on or you up this number any, you can click and drag it up and you generate it. This is like the randomization button for the density. So when I click this with the four set, then four of my steps will have more density inside the step itself. So you see one, two, three, four of these steps on my left channel and one, two, three, four of the steps in my right channel had some density to them that was randomized between a half step, you know, two steps inside of one or three smaller steps. You randomize it again and it'll stay. So this is like, so this is like a randomization for the density by itself, separate from the randomization that happens up here alone. So you can randomize just the density alone. You can also just reset it right here and everything goes back how you would expect it to go. So there you go. Moving over to the right a little more, you have your presets. So when I hit this button here, you can go between the different presets and you can come out and kind of see what the preset is doing. Um, you have two pages of presets to choose from. You can check those out and see how you like them. Moving further to the right, you have your disintegration. And what this does is when I turn this on, you see it automatically turned on my infinity knob because the disintegration is something that happens over several bars. So it automatically went and enabled the infinity mode for me. And what happens is over these four bars, you're going to see the sequence go from completely full to almost nothing over those four bars. Here, let's do it. And finally, on the fourth bar, you see I have nothing there. So that's disintegration. Then right next to that, you have a grow mode. And grow mode does, as you would expect, it does the opposite. So it starts from bare bones and builds up to a full sequence um, within the number of bars you have set at the top with your infinity mode. So again, as soon as I turn this on, it turns on infinity mode and sets me a number of bars greater than one. So let's look at grow mode. and it kind of maxes out at the fourth bar. So that is disintegrate and grow mode, and they do require infinity to be on. So moving down to the left a little more, you have your smoother. So pretty much how smooth is it? If I set it all the way to 100, each step that's going between being on and off is gonna be really smooth. If I have it set all the way down, then the steps are gonna be really, really choppy. So let's start all the way down with the steps being a little more choppy and quick. Let's take it up.
So you can see it's a lot more smooth if I push it all the way to 100%. All right, and moving to the right a little more, you have your shuffle, which is really just a way to add some groove to the gating. Okay. Moving further to the right, you have your, your wet signal, whether it's completely dry or wet, 100% wet, or bring it all the way down to dry. Um, moving on further down, you can actually change how much of the sequence is playing, and you can change the length of that by just dragging that back some. Okay, drag it all the way back out. Um, and here you can kind of shift it using these left and right icons, so you can shift everything there. Don't forget, you can also click here and you can have some of these steps if you want, make them two, three steps or just half of a step inside of that actual step. <laughs> Probably not using the, the best terminology, but you follow me. Down here, if you like what you got, you can save a preset. Boom, you can save that preset. And if you wanna edit that preset, you come up to the top right and it's gonna label that one as just a quick preset. If I just click here and I wanna save it, it automatically names it quick preset. You can change it to LB preset or whatever you want to change it to, all right? So there is a lot of MIDI control that you have here as well. Um, so this is something also that you just want to be aware of and check out if you like to do live recording or you like to do any kind of live performances, you're definitely going to want to check out the different MIDI controls that you have and that you can map right inside of the plugin. So there you guys have it, GateLab from Audio Modern. I hope you guys found the video helpful. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so I can keep bringing y'all this good content. Until next time, this is Al B and we are out. Yes, sir.